A fish that's found in the Amazon, and sometimes even in pet stores, can tell us a lot about the human brain. But how? They're called weakly electric fish because they make weak electric fields. And when I say weak, it's on the order of a volt or two. So if you were to hold the fish in your hand, you wouldn't feel any electrical field. But they have specialized receptors all over their body, which they use to detect the electric field they generate. And they use this electric field to communicate between each other and to detect objects that are near to them, like prey and predators. So these fish don't have just one electrosensory system, they have two. And the first electrosensory system they have is called the ampullary electrosensory system. And if you've heard of sharks being electroreceptive, that is that they can detect electric fields, they use an ampullary system to detect those electric fields. And sharks and rays and electric fish and even platypuses have a form of ampullary electrosensory system that they use to detect electric fields in their environment. In addition, the electric fish that Fortune studies in his lab has its own unique electrosensory system. The tuberous system produces an electrical field that only the fish can detect. The fish uses this system to detect non-electrical objects like leaves and rocks, as well as other electric fish. Why would we possibly be interested in studying these things? And it's because we're interested in a general question, a really fundamental question that goes to understanding the human experience, which is, how does the brain work? And that's a really tough question, as it turns out. You've got billions of neurons working in your brain. They use electricity as a signal. Everything that you've ever perceived, including seeing your grandmother to petting a cat, or petting your grandmother's cat, <laughs> are translated in your brain into electrical pulses. And every movement that you've ever made in your life are generated by these same kinds of electrical pulses from your brain. So we are desperate to understand how these electrical pulses work. The weekly electric fish is a good subject for this kind of research because its brain is a simple system. Researchers generate an electric field in the water that they can read as an electrical output in the fish's brain. And the cool thing is, both this stimulus and response are in the same language, electricity. So we have an easy way to quantify it. When researchers try to study other animals that don't have an electrosensory system, studying how they perceive the world is harder because we can't quantify how their brain processes inputs. We can only study their behavior. Studying a fish's brain, which is tiny and well-mapped, is easier than understanding the much more complex human brain. But the concepts still apply. Think about how you watch somebody's lips move when they talk. Your brain receives both auditory and visual inputs and is able to combine them to help you accurately interpret what the person is saying. This is an example of sensory integration and it's the same thing that's happening when weakly electric fish use their ampullary and tuberous systems to navigate the murky waters of the Amazon.